name is Arjuna Manapere. I'm the uh, vice chairman, uh, vice president of OPA, chairman of the National Issues Committee. I welcome you all. We start on time. We I gave a slight delay, five minutes delay. Sorry about that. But the people will trickle in as usual. Meantime, we will start this. Now the session is being recorded, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure that you are in your best discipline. Again, my name is Arjuna Manapere, Vice President OPA, Chairman of the National Issues Committee. Today is a very important session. We are recording this one because we want to record this and we will put it on our website, OPA website, www.opasl.lk. And uh, everybody can view it later. I'm sure the others will start joining in. My our, our team members are letting people in as we go through. Today we have a session that uh, going to talk about the topic is port development, Colombo port. This is a uh, one of the first first of the series of sessions we will have about port development in Sri Lanka. We have to understand what are these ports are all about because generally people think ports are harbors, which is different. Uh, our, our, our panelists will inform you that. Uh, so the idea is to learn through this process. So as OPA forum members and public, we can participate in the dialogue of port development, which is national asset. By profession, I'm an engineer. Uh, we have two panelists today. This will be a sort of dialogue-like environment here where they've not, not direct presentations. There'll be some questions asked and the panelists will start giving answers to those questions, explaining things. Now, to set the scenario, first of all, I will invite our president of OPA, Engineer Shantar Senator. President, it's your turn to give an introduction. Thank you, Engineer Arjuna. Good evening to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first wish all the ladies who are joining online a very happy Women's Day. I'm extremely, extremely delighted to participate in this maiden webinar organized by the National Issues Committee of the OPA under the leadership of the Chairman, Engineer Arjun Manamperi. OPA has and this is a very dynamic committee. And the National Issues Committee is a very dynamic committee out of those standing committees. And the title of today's webinar is a very, it's a highly pertinent one, I would say. It is the subject. We are planning to deliberate this subject, the person has this has the country, particularly among the professionals at present. OP has already expressed their, their view on this matter to the to His Excellency the President. I take pleasure in welcoming the two panelists, Mr. Upul Jatisa. Additional Managing Director of Sri Lanka Ports of Authority, and Ms. Shehara Disilla Jayavadana, Vice Chairperson of CASA and Joint Managing Director of McLaren's Hold Holdings. I, I welcome both of you on behalf of the OPA. Also, it is my pleasure to welcome all the participants and the organizers. I wish all the best for a very successful webinar. Over to Engineer Arjuna. Thank you very much, President. That's President of OP Engineer Shantar Senra. Now, uh, let me uh, introduce the first panelist. The way I'm going to introduce the panelists are like when I first, uh, before I ask the first questions from the panelists, I will introduce the person. I'm going to start with Mr. Upul Jati, sir, who is an additional managing director, administration and operations of Sri Lanka Ports Authority. BSc Engineering is for his first degree from University of Sri Jayadanapura. 
Then he obtained a master's in ports management, World Marine University of Sweden, diploma in marketing, chartered member of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport UK. These are some of his academic and professional qualifications. But what is important to me and all of us, he is a lifer in the ports, business of ports. He joined Sri Lanka Ports Authority as a management training in 1986. In, after graduation, he has worked in the Ports Authority for 30, over 34 years. That's more than three decades. Five years work experience in Middle East ports, great ports, public authority, Shaiba container terminal, United Arab Emirates, Sharjah and Kofakan container terminals. He's also a visiting faculty member for over 14 years in various universities and training institutions in Sri Lanka. Pujatisa comes with uh, many years or decades of experience in the ports of the ports, of the ports and harbor industry. Pull, uh, good evening to you. Good evening, Arjuna. Thank you for your kind introduction. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, today on time and before time. And also thank you very much for taking up our invitation to join in a short notice. We so have been one week or two weeks. We decided to do this session because uh, this is a hot topic. Now, I have seen you on TV, so, well, programs and etc. But I think today's session is a little bit different from those programs. What we are really interested in is learning from you and the other panelists, member, Shahara, about why ports are so important to Sri Lanka and what are our current challenges, current opportunities and future plans. That way we become more educated and as a result of that, we as citizens of the country and as well as professionals, we can engage in the dialogue of post development in Sri Lanka. So without any further ado, Ports, can you please tell us about a little bit about Ports, Port of Colombo? Over to you. Yes, Arjun, uh, the ports are very important for an uh, island nation like Sri Lanka, uh, that is seaport and airport. And uh, when you talk about the seaport, uh, if you take the number of uh, tons handled in this country, that is as import and export, 99.7%, uh, 99.7% uh, of the total tonnage coming into this country and going out of this country is handled through seaports. Uh, out of that, 95% of the tons are handled in in Colombo. So th that means airport only, they carry 0.3% of the tonnage and uh, seaports 99.7%. Uh, um, and uh, if you talk about the port of Colombo, the port of Colombo, we handle 95% of the tonnage and 88% uh, of the ships come into Sri Lanka and 100% of the containers that are handled in this country. So all that is handled in Colombo. So Colombo is the main principal port. And uh, since uh, you asked about this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, how important uh, you would understand during this COVID period, even though the airport was shut down almost for about 10 months, but the seaport was continuously operating throughout the period with little bit disruptions here and there due to the COVID. But we managed to continue because that's the reason why the port is known as heart of the nation. So when you say heart of the nation, it should uh, work 24 hour, 365 days uh, continuously. Uh, that is, uh, even if you look at from the maritime perspective, over 90% of the international trade is carried by sea uh, ships and uh, they have to come to uh, the ports and the harbor. Um, uh, I think uh, since we are talking, our main topic is about port development. So when it comes to port, uh, uh, there are two key words. One is the harbor, and the one is the port. So I think you mentioned about the harbor is a shelter for ships. So any seagoing ship uh, has to come to a sheltered place um, uh, to get various kinds of services. So we have a lot of harbors in Sri Lanka. But here, uh, from the service provider's perspective, that is from the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, who is the uh, owner and the regulator and also a service provider, of uh, all uh, managing ports in Sri Lanka, uh, uh, as per the Act uh, of Sri Lanka Ports Authority, right? Um, so um, we 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 manage all commercial ports in Sri Lanka. So we are talking of uh, ports the, that is uh, the the harbors that is carrying uh, handling uh, commercial ships. 
Let me take you through short questions, series of short questions, so that way we save the time and we'll quickly set up the framework. Okay? Is that okay with you? I'll ask some short questions. Yes, sure. Right. The first question I have for you is that you just mentioned the difference between the harbor, which is a place for ships and boats and etc. to be kept parked. Port is where things are happening on a commercial level. Am I right? Yes, you're right. Very good. Now we are talking about Colombo. There are uh, what are the other harbors we have? We have Rikamali Harbor, which is a natural harbor. Olivelle, which is another natural harbor. Of course, now it has been man built as well in Colombo Port and so on and so forth. Now a harbor can be natural, right? Like Rikamali Harbor, harbor can be a natural harbor. Yes. How does the harbor become a? How can? How, what? What are the techniques you use to make a harbor? Or a, if there's no natural harbor, what is? What do you mean by breakwater? Right. So breakwater, so whenever there is a harbor having a breakwater, that is artificial. So when there are no breakwater, it is natural. So Trincomalee is a natural harbor and all the other harbors, they have breakwaters. That is from natural to artificial, how you change it by building breakwater. So that is the key infrastructure that is needed uh, to change from natural to artificial. I think this is the right time for you to put up the slide of yours. If you bring that up, please. Share the screen. Yes, uh, um, so if you uh, uh, look at this slide here again, you can understand the role Wait. of the port, right? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, this one. the fourth one. Uh, yeah, so, um, so let me just show uh, you the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the port of Colombo, right? Since we are, our main topic is about the port of Colombo. Here you can see uh, the two harbors of the port of Colombo. One is the old harbor, that was built by the British from natural to artificial in uh, 1900. And then you can see the Colombo South Harbor, we call Colombo Port Expansion Project that was done recently. And cool. you can see harbors in the port of Colombo. Well, can you kindly point, you, can, can, can you see that I'm pointing to the breakwater? The best so, Can you see that I'm doing that? Can you see? Or oh, you point, point your mouse, can you point your mouse? Can you point your mouse and point out the breakwater? And speak up. Artificial by capturing 300 hectares water and the land area from the sea. Now this is the, the, uh, the old harbor we call Colombo Harbor. Colombo Harbor. Can you also uh, give your SAGT? What is SAGT? What is JCT? What is UCT? So, so inside the Colombo Harbor, we have three container terminals. Uh, the JCT is Jaya Container Terminal and UCT is Unity Container Terminal. Both belongs to Sri Lanka Ports Authority. And SAGT is South Asia Gateway Terminal. That is the PPP, Public Private Partnership, BOT built uh, terminal with, uh, uh, in uh, uh, 1999 to manage uh, thir 30 years. So that is SAGT. So this is the old harbor where we have a water depth of 15 meters after old modification and the draft of 14.25. That's the Colombo Harbor. So when you use the word draft, uh, you're talking about the depth of the ship, ship right? How deep? Yeah. Is it? yeah, that is draft is the, is the uh, maximum load ship can come into the harbor. Depth right. is the total water depth from water level top to bottom. Right. Then of course, on to the left of the screen, that is uh, East Terminal and CIC terminals are there, right? Yes. So all, so, of, this, all of this area is called South Harbor, is that what you call it? Yes. Columbia. Now, we did, now we actually, we expanded the uh, Colombo port and we call Colombo port expansion. And today it is known as Colombo South Harbor, where we built again uh, two breakwaters. Total length of breakwater is 6.8 kilometers. Here you can see the breakwater the main breakwater and the breakwater arm. So the total length of breakwater is 6.8 kilometers. It was built in four years time. Uh, that is 2008 to 2012. Whereas the British people, uh, for them to build 2.7 kilometers of breakwater, it took 37 years from 1875 to 1912. Right. Now where, now we see the East Terminal, the, the most discussed terminal, East Terminal is there, but where is the best terminal that is being discussed now? Right. Right. CICT is the first terminal that is in the south. We call CICT fully operational. East terminal, 
uh, one third of the berth is built and the balance to be built. And the west terminal will come here. Again, another full terminal. At the moment, it is the total C. It's not built. Now, uh, Kul, before I turn over the discussion to Shahara, I have another question. You are talking, you, 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 when I spoke to you at the early stages, you, can you uh, unshare, the, uh, unshare the screen, please? Turn off the screen. Thank you, yes, sir. Right. Now, uh, Kul, uh, very well done. Thank you very much. So that's just a uh, time for us to have a discussion, proper discussion. Now, the, uh, the question I have for you is that you said that there are C side customers and show side customers for a port like yours. So, because you are in the business of doing commercial goods transfer. So, what do you mean by C, C, side, C, side, C, side, C side and show side? Yeah, Arjuna, so uh, for that, I think uh, uh, I may uh, share uh, uh, another slide so that it can, you can uh, easily understand. So uh, the seaside, our main customer is coming from the seaside, right? If you look at this slide, you can see seaside on the left side, you can see the ships coming, that is ship turnaround time. So they are coming to the harbor and what we do, we get the ship navigation operation, we get the ship as quickly as possible without waiting and then start discharging loading and then sail the ship. So our number one customer comes from the seaside, uh, that is the ship and the land side, the trucks in Sri Lanka, we don't use uh, the rail, uh, but uh, we use mostly trucks. So the trucks bring cargo, in, import, export cargo is uh, received, delivered through trucks. And within the port, this is the place where we provide uh, uh, handling uh, storage of cargo, short term, medium term, managing container freight stations, value addition, all this is done within the port land. So we have two sides, seaside and the land side. So, primary function of the port is to transfer cargo between the sea and the land quickly and efficiently. Right, thank you very much. So it is very important for you to just to, for a future for a future discussion, dialogue with you, I will start in about another 10 minutes time. It is very crucial for a port operation to bring the ships in, unload it, load the ones that are going out, the goods and service, the goods items are going out to run, up, load it up, and then let the ship go as fast as possible so other ships can come in. And also the what should be unloaded being shipped back to the uh, factories and companies in the country, right? So it's very important that more process be done very fast, am I right? Right, right, Arjun, yeah. Yes, and the faster you do that and faster you do that efficiently, you will make more money, right? Yes, we make good money and the customer will be happy. That's true. Right, I think this is a very good point for me to introduce Shahara. Shahara, get ready, Shahara. Now we have with our second panelist, uh, Shahara De Silva, Jawadana. Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Shahara De Silva, Jawadana. She is the group managing director of the McLaren's Group of Companies and the deputy chairman of McLaren's Group of Management Limited, a diversified conglomerate with the core business in shipping and logistic services. Shahara, I like to what caught my attention was uh, more than anything else is that you are you are the first female formula racing driver in Sri Lanka. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank um, you, Arjun. I am delighted to meet you today for the first time. See you today. And so it's history being made, okay? So being a, today is a women's day in the world, right? That's right. International Women's Day. I don't know why people have to call the big card Women's Day in my home and everywhere else, Women's Day is every day. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, everybody, uh, she's the first female Formula Racing driver in Sri Lanka. For me, that's a hell of a complication. I will read some of her uh, background. Uh, Shara holds a MSc in Shipping and Trade and Finance with honors from City University, Cast Business School of London, top school in the UK, and the BS Economics with the honors from London School of Economics. So Shara's, Shara's background is Academic background is top caliber. She has created the strategic growth of McLaren's group over the last 15 years. She is the founding president of the Women's International Shipping and Trading Association in Sri Lanka, which is called WISTA, W-I-S-T-A. She's also the first female vice chairperson in, in its 50-year history of Ceylon Association of Shipping Agents, CASA. Foremost association of this in the shipping industry. She's the board of director, member of the Ceylon Shipping Corporation Limited as well. She's also a chartered member of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. 
So, Jana, you have an excellent education background and a professional background. Now, the reason I asked Jana to join us is she has the customer of Upul, meaning that she shipping liners, ships that come into the port. As you recollect, what Upul said, Upul said the ships come into the port and they have been serviced, their goods have been unloaded, and whatever the goods we have to be taken back to other parts of the world will be loaded. And, and that's the part that she gets into the picture. So, Shara, tell us a little bit about shipping industry uh, and uh, background and uh, how do you see this port operation is all about and why it is so important to you? Yes, Arjuna. So, um, as you said earlier, I represent uh, CASA, which is the Ceylon Shipping Agents Association. So every ship that comes into Sri any port in Sri Lanka needs a shipping agent. And that the association of those agents are, is CASA. So basically CASA would represent the port's customers. And uh, this includes all kinds of ships. It could be liners, casual callers, oil tankers, bunker vessels, service vessels different type of vessels which come into Port of Colombo and other ports in Sri Lanka for cargo operation and also services. And from the customer's perspective, what is most important is obviously an efficient turnaround, uh, economical port tariffs, um, and the smooth handling of the cargo, and also the provision of various services like water, oil, uh, repairs, spare parts, you name it. Ships are moving, it's almost like moving cities. So they require a lot of services, food, uh, provisions, so many uh, different types of services that they require. And it's the port is the hub where all these types of services are, are provided. I think you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> You're a better host than I am. <laughs> uh, where do you put our Colombo port in terms of world standings, at least regional standings? Where, where do we stand? Colombo port is primarily a transshipment hub. So um, in 2019, I think Upul will know better than me, we, I think we did a volume of almost 7.2 million TUs. And of this, it is um, over almost 80% is transshipment. So only 20% of the cargo that is handled at Port of Colombo is import and export. The rest of all the other containers are transshipment. Transshipment is basically containers which come off a ship and are stored in the port and then get onto another ship. It's like a, a transit cargo. It doesn't come inside into the country. So Colombo, because of its strategic location in the south of um, India and also in the center of the east-west shipping route has become a, tran a key transshipment hub. And we have, uh, I think Upul would be better be able to say where we were in the rankings, I think world uh, 23 in the world, but this keeps moving. 22nd, okay, we've moved up, yeah. And um, 22nd in the world in terms of volume. Um, our main competitors for this would be obviously Singapore, um, Salala, uh, Port Klang, and other regional ports. But having said so, um, last year, Colombo Port faced a situation where we were almost in congestion, uh, almost over capacity. But however, due to the pandemic and due to uh, sort of the supply chain, entire supply chain collapsing, uh, there were several services which have um, reduced or certain volumes which have reduced from Colombo. So I think this year we probably end up with 6.8. Am I right, Rupul? Maybe seven. Um, so we are still able to manage. However, there is a dire need to increase the capacity in the port of Colombo. And this is basically the Eastern, much talked about East Container Terminal. I have to mention it here. I think uh, because it is the need of the hour, uh, and of course, uh, heads off to Port Syracuse Ports Authority. They have operationalized it, uh, uh, not with the cranes that were meant for ECT, but of course, cranes which were meant for JCT. But uh, the need of the hour is really to place the orders for the cranes 
and the equipment um, to operationalize ECT in its fullest capacity and in its fullest efficiency because the demand from the shipping lines is there. They like to work in Colombo. They like the efficiency of Colombo. And we represent, we talk to the principals, the main, the biggest shipping line in the world now is Mediterranean Shipping Company and also Musk. Two, one is a Swiss based company. The other one is a Danish company. And both of them have their hubs in transshipment hubs in Colombo. And if Colombo is able to increase their capacity, both these two major lines will bring in volume. And so will the other uh, main liners as well. So we see the East Container Terminal has been idle for the last five years, which is uh, indeed a very sad situation for a country, for a nation, because so much economic activity could have been created. Right. Uh, we will get to the East Container Terminal latter part of the session. Initially, sure. I wanted the groundwork. Now, Shara, you mentioned that the capacity, you used the word capacity. That's right. right. Now, when we looked at that, the, the drone shot from uh, above the sky, the port that uh, full used. Capacity can be looked at for a layman like myself. Capacity like the, the terminals that we have, right? The size of the terminals, the, uh, the gantry trains and et cetera, et cetera. And the capacity also has to be dealt with the trucks that services we have and how, this, how fast the trucks can get out because you can be very fast within the port but if the trucks are the truck system is not perfect and the road system is not perfect, the end customer will not get that goods on time. So you will be satisfied as a shipper, but not the final supply chain. Now, in terms of Sri Lankan port, Colombo port, Shara, where do you see the capacity increase needs to happen? Is it the terminals? Is it the all of it, or is it the equipment or the computerization, or what is it? Well, definitely starting with the, the terminal, the container handling capacity. Capacity is a big word, actually. It means so many things. So in, from a customer's perspective, the first need is the increasing the container handling capacity, which is the East Container Terminal. But apart from that, uh, Port of Colombo also does require uh, a state-of-the-art brake bulk terminal, a cruise terminal, um, also additional capacity for liquid bulk to handle uh, bunkers and oil. So all of this um, are infrastructure which, which, um, which is required and especially with deep draft terminals. Now um, there are berths, you can have berths, but if they are not able to accommodate the deep draft vessels, which is more than you know, 12 to 13 meters, then that is because the trend in the world now is to go with the bigger ships. So those we should be able to cater to those bigger ships and we need deep draft berths to handle break bulk and also containers. So um, last year we saw our capacity hitting a maximum. Now it is eased somewhat, but there are other things also which contribute. It's not only the physical infrastructure, definitely software, the yard equipment, the efficiency of the uh, crane operators, uh, the inter-terminal trucking, which is uh, movement of the containers between the terminals and the overall coordination of the entire operation. I think Upul will be better suited than me to talk about um, this, this point. But um, all that needs to come in together uh, to, to increase the capacity. We'll get ready. Upul, I have a couple of questions for you. Yeah, yeah, Jonah, go ahead. Now, uh, if I can have full uh, screenshot, uh, Dudanti, can I see you full on the screen? I'd like to see his face close to me. So, uh, there you go. Upul, now, uh, Shahara mentioned we go on a first time basis, ladies and gentlemen. We, we three agree that we will call each other on a, based on our first name. Sure. Now, the question I have for Kul is, now Shahara mentioned about capacity and she mentioned the capacity is a combination of a lot of things. Then she also mentioned, the, we, we will get, get to that topic later a little bit in deeper sense, the East Content Terminal, but for a, as, a, as a whole, why was it delayed, uh, things were a little lower capacity last year or so? Is it the COVID situation? Now, uh, when you look at the capacity, as uh, Shehara mentioned, and also which you have seen in my slide, 
we expanded the Colombo port, that is Colombo port expansion, we completed in year 2012. Started in, as I mentioned, uh, 2008 commenced and completed in 2012. And the Ports Authority invested total 400 million US dollars with ADB. ADB came up with $300 million and 100 million from Ports Authority just to build the breakwater and uh, uh, capture uh, 600 hectares from the seabed with a, a two-way channel with a 20 meter depth and inside the harbor basin, 18 meters. Well, can, you, can you do this? Can you put up the slide again? Yeah. Explain it. I think that will help the audience, the viewers. Yes, uh, then you, you really. Now, uh, let me just uh, show you. Now, if you look at this slide, right, you could understand what how the port uh, expanded. Now, um, uh, let... Hang on a second. Will... Cool. It takes a few seconds to, to come back. We, we are not on the right slide, I think. Right. So, if you look at... Can you uh, uh, hear? And uh, if you look at uh, this slide, from uh, the left side, you can see the the old harbor, 300 hectares, which was uh, built by British is coming. And then the 6.8 kilometers of the breakwater coming in. And then the channel and the basin and the south terminal, today CICT and the east terminal full plan and the west terminal full plan and the future plan. Uh, if when the uh, south harbor becomes full operation or full capacity, even the plan was done to extend the West Container Terminal with the expansion of breakwater. Here, yeah. you would understand this was our master plan with why, ADB. Why did you call it? This was, this was our master plan. This is your master plan, isn't it? Yes, this is our master plan. Exactly. This is right. our master plan. Right. Now, what are, now, I think there are ships bigger than 18 meters, right? Uh, for, if no, yeah, yes, there are, but Container ships, today the biggest container ships a 24,000 TU carrying ship with a 400 meter length and the maximum draft could go 16.25 meters. But if you look at the uh, Colombo uh, uh, South Harbor, depth is 18 meters and the draft is 17.25. So we have another one meter more, right? With a bigger turning basin uh, to I handle would... even the future ships. Upul, I want to get something clear. You are showing us a picture. Is this whole thing the South Harbor, including the Old Harbor? Old, old, old Harbor, Colombo Harbor, everything put together is called South Harbor, right? No. Put together, it is called Colombo Port, but yeah. the, uh, uh, the Colombo the, the Columbo Port is the old one, and this is the what you call Colombo South Harbor. The new one, expand expansion, we call it Colombo South Harbor. Together with both harbors, we call Port of Colombo. Right. Now, do you have a capacity to expand in North Harbor, North of the Harbor as well, right? Yeah, that's our long-term master plan, which okay. I uh, which I can uh, uh, show you. Uh, shall I do it now? Yes, please do that. So that we yeah. get. So this is our this is our long-term master plan, right? And uh, uh, now this is the two harbors. Here you can see the uh, old harbor with the 15 meter depth and the new harbor with 18 meter depth. And uh, let me just uh, uh, take you uh, step by step towards the, the, uh, our uh, future uh, uh, plans. Now, this is the JCT extension. We are extending 120 meters of JCT berth, and it is now underway. And then the East Terminal, the balance construction. At the moment, we are operating with three cranes, as Shihara mentioned. And we will complete with the full terminal with the 1,320 meters uh, with the 400 meter three ships can berth there. That is East Terminal, fully operational, right? And then we go for the West Container Terminal, WCT. And then the extension of the West Terminal, that is the phase uh, two of the Colombo Port expansion. Here you can see. And then we go for the North Port development. Actually, the, the studies were done with the ADB uh, 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 for, to develop the North, that is uh, the uh, uh, end of this uh, uh, Kalani River. Uh, we will have a uh, birth, uh, breakwater built, and then we will have a back-to-back -back terminal with the uh, ECT and the, the current uh, uh, SAGT and then go for the North Port development. Now this all, this is the master plan. 
depending on the demand. Now, this is a port is a demand driven, right? So depending on the demand, we could modify as Shihara mentioned that we need to do some improvements in cruise handling, the brake bulk handling, uh, liquid handling, dry bulk handling, apart from the container. Now, our main business here in Colombo is, as Trihara mentioned, 82% of the total volume we handle is container, container transshipment. And then we need a lot of value addition to support the transshipment business, like multi-country consolidation, entrepreneur trade, that okay. is uh, warehousing, CFS and all. Okay, Upul. Now, uh, very, let's go very slowly. Now, leave this picture as it is on the screen. Speak to this doc, this the nice uh, diagram that you have drawn here, rather created. Now, 2030, by if 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 we if we simply execute this plan by 2040, all will be completed. That is roughly 20 years from now, right? Yes, this is ma master plan, long term master plan. Yeah, right, right. That's okay. I'm just trying to set the baseline right now. If you see the pandemic situation and everything put together. As a person who has been in the field for 23 decades or more, do you are you bullish about this? I mean, do you see a world because technology comes in, various things happening, pandemic has come in and gone, and they are predicting some more pandemics down the road within over a period of next 20 years and etc. How do you see the world at the bigger picture? Do you see the cargo shipment is a big business in the world in the future as well? Yes, Arjuna, if you look at this region, the uh, South Asia, where we have India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, if you put these four countries together, and if you look at the population, it is over 1.5 billion. That means about more than 22% of the people living in this uh, region in, in South Asia. But if you look at the total container traffic we handled in all these four countries, is about 30 million TUs. We handle 7.2 million, right? So what, compared to the population and the region, and this is going to be the next growth. Uh, as you know, the production center shifted from Europe to US to uh, uh, Japan, Korea, and coming to China and now coming to South. And then now this is the next growth will be India and right. then Africa. Right. So we have the capacity, we have the potential, and we are in a very, very strategic location with regard to the connectivity. Rupul, uh, explain to us the difference between transshipment and relay, relay shipment, relay based. That's a word for relay. Yeah, Arjuna, now this transshipment can divide into two. One is the relay transshipment, the other one is a consolidated transshipment. Would now, you like do you, do you think it's better to put the India as well in this picture? Do you have a picture with Indian harbors and etc.? So that you uh, uh, I I don't have straight away here because I I didn't uh, uh, get it That's there, but I can get it for you uh, later. Don't worry. Uh, like, you explain it. You explain what's the difference uh, between the two. Now now when I when when I say Sri Lanka, we are uh, we are. Closest to the main east-west shipping room, that is the biggest trade container. If you, know, when you look at the container, biggest container trade lane is from Asia to Europe. And we are almost in the middle. And we are in the center of the uh, uh, Asia-Europe trade lane where we can connect not only Indian West Coast, East Coast, Bay of Bengal, Bangladesh, and um, uh, Myanmar, and also East Africa, South Africa, West Africa, and going towards the Gulf. So we are a very strategic uh, located uh, country. If we develop port infrastructure, superstructure with public-private partnership, right? And if you go ahead with our plan uh, without disruption, without um, uh, uh, things, now you would have, I think Shiara also mentioned about that. So we had, we build ports, we build infrastructure with a huge investment, some cost, but due to so many reasons, uh, there are a lot of delays, nothing happened as we plan, but we need to have a plan because just like other port, if you take, for example, uh, I think uh, you can study now, even Singapore, they have four terminals, container terminals. Now they are building a new one to handle put, handle all the containers in, uh, in one location into us, 65 million TU capacity. That is again, they also have like 20, 30, 20, 40 plan. And if in recently, I think uh, just concluded Maritime uh, India uh, Summit, right? Uh, they have a plan of uh, 2030. 
If you look at uh, the uh, Indian Maritime uh, Summit, you would understand this one as well. So every country has a master plan with regard to the, its uh, uh, connectivity and the ports development. Hopefully, we'll take this very slowly. We may have a couple of more sessions on this one. So let's let's let let us all sink into our audience and those who are going to view this recorded version. Now, I would like to bring back Shahara into the picture and ask some questions from her. Shahara, if you don't mind, you unmute your mic and uh, unmute yourself and come on the camp order. Now, the question I have for you is that these ports. Even in Sri Lanka now, we have the East Container Terminal, which is run now, managed by the Ports Authority. Uh, Western Container Terminal to be given to some other outside parties. ICIT, ICIT is operated by Chinese and some others. Then the SCGT is operated by uh, John Keels and some other private sector organization from uh, India. Why? Why is that? Why? Which Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the prefer the, this kind of joint venture partnership? So, do you prefer the whole port to be owned by one party and operated with the private trust? State doesn't matter. Which way you prefer? The reason I am asking this, Shara, I'll tell you why I am asking this question. I, I, you know better than sir because you are in the shipping industry. Now, uh, what I gather from a full when our preliminary discussions is when you go to a terminal. You have the cranes and etc. logistics. Then you also have the systems, computer systems, etc. Now they can vary from one to another depending on uh, who runs the terminal, right? Is that a problem for you? No. So um, just to make it clear, it doesn't matter who runs the terminal. It could be the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, it could be a private party, it could be a foreign party. From a customer's perspective, what matters is efficiency. So efficiency, when I mean, is productivity in terms of moves per hour, how fast the ship can be brought in, less waiting time for a berth, and once you're in the berth, how, how fast the, uh, the cargo is moved uh, then and how fast the ship can be um, turned around. Basically, this is the most important thing. And also in between that, uh, the technology comes into play a lot because sometimes uh, you can say that our port is somewhat a little bit um, more heavy on the paperwork side where the customs uh, requirements still do require lots of hard copies in terms of paperwork. Our clearances are still manual. Um, so there is a long way for us to go to match uh, the digitalization that you see in the regional ports of Singapore. But from a customer's perspective, time is money for a vessel. The longer they the ship on the water is money. So they need to move it fast. So what matters to them is not who operates it, but efficiency. Right, but I have to add to that, from a country's perspective, it's different. From a country's perspective, it makes more sense, of course, to have um, the, it operated by the national, uh, the, the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, because all the revenue will then remain in the country. If it is operated by a foreign party, then the profits, the revenue will be repatriated out of the country and not probably reinvested back. So these are certain things to consider. Geopolitics are there to consider in terms of um, you know, neighboring countries wanting to exert influence over our country because a port is, after all, critical in terms of, um, you know, access into a country. So those are some things to consider, but that's from a nation's perspective. But uh, what I speak is uh, from the customer's perspective, which is the shipping line. Right. It's, uh, so, Chara, I was trying to interrupt you and ask you a question. I almost forgot it now. Uh, Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Do, do you, by the way, do you hear when you speak? Do, do you hear me when I speak? If we speak at the same time, do you hear me? You are more focused on what you want to say, I guess. That's okay. Right. Here, here's what I was going to ask you. Now, you, you are very articulate about it. From the country's perspective, the revenue, if we do everything as a country, then it, revenue will come to us. It's foreign exchange after all, right? It's not just local money. It's much needed foreign exchange. And the pool's plan, future plan is a big, big plan. In fact, the port will become almost... I would say 60% more bigger, roughly, you know, from the capacity point of view, just by looking at it. I'm, I'm just looking at it, something like that. Um, why do you think that the people go for partnerships? It's private, public, or totally private partnership. Why do you think people are doing that? 
to risk mitigate because a lot of investment needs to go in. Why is that people are doing that? Well, yeah. here the important thing is about building the infrastructure. You have to tie in the volume because you can build a massive port as you see in uh, India. You have so many deep water ports coming up, but there is no volume. So that is the, why the public-private partnership is required because you tie in a shipping line or another terminal operator who can bring international volume because volume is not generated from Sri Lanka. Our export import cargo is minimal. That's Transshipment true. is the base of, of the volume in our port. So transshipment is that volume is created by international shipping lines. So now I remember the question I want to ask from Nishara. Now, as a shipper, would you bring your ship, ship your shipping line? I think, but is it, what is your shipping line? You are working for McLaren's, right? Do shippers, shipping lines always come to the same terminal or they go to multiple terminals? Can, can for example, most ships come, three ships come and they go to three different terminals? Yes, they yeah. can. Because those shipping lines will have different agreements with those terminals because different terminals have different drafts, different uh, rates, structures. So those uh, shipping lines come into agreements with the terminals for long term and they sign up uh, with the Port Authority or with CICD or with SAGT to handle certain volumes and uh, you know certain negotiations take place to, uh, to make sure that they have berthing on arrival and so on and so forth. Right. And now it's turn again back to Upul Upul. Upul, uh, thank you, Shara. That was exciting stuff from you. And now I, you have nicely positioned this discussion to, for Upul to answer. Upul. Yes. Right. Let's talk about, now we have, so far we have discussed about the harbor, the development of the harbor, the physical infrastructure and all that stuff. Now let's talk about the service, the, the, how the, when the ship comes and leaves and etc. the unloading, loading, information, etc. Can you talk a little bit about how these things have been done. You mentioned to me about electronic data interchange. Little bit of that, not heavy stuff, but just give us an idea. Yes, Arjuna. Uh, now, uh, with regard to the uh, information, now information can come from two sides, as I mentioned. One is from the seaside, that is ship information and the cargo information that is uh, coming as transshipment and import export and the shipping information from the seaside and that information is coming through the uh, shipping agents uh, and the shipping lines and all and that information is basically coming to three uh, terminals uh, in Sri Lanka in Colombo and uh, that is all information coming with regard to the ship and the cargo information the terminal uh, uh, container information coming electronically to terminals. So terminals, they have their own uh, international software running. Now, for example, SAGT, JCT, we have a Navi system and CICT, they have their own similar system. So that all information coming is electronically, right? So ele ele EDI, electronic data interchange is happening. Uh, and also, even the shipping lines, they transmit their manifest information to customs and uh, the, the ports as well. And when it comes to the land side, as, uh, as you asked, yes, if you take uh, the import container, now uh, out of the import containers, 95%, 95% of just, the... Yes, just, please. A, just a second. I am wondering whether you others can see you in a full screen view or not. I'm not seeing you in full screen view. Uh, you, you, you want my... Uh, Yes, because Yulanti, can you please bring up Mr. Upul to the full screen? Shara is there in screen. This one. Right, that's better. Leave it like that. That's great. Go ahead, Upul. Two of you. Yeah, so, so we are using a, a, a EDI version to get information from the shipping line. And also now we are trying uh, to connect uh, from uh, through the freight forwarder uh, to our systems and also to custom system, because it's not only the terminals, we have to work with customs, as Shihara mentioned, because uh, uh, the information, because the port cannot operate without custom approval. You can't handle ships, not only customs, like immigration, port health, and all the sys. Uh, let, from... let, me, yeah. let me put it in a layman's terms, what you're trying to say, right? Because I'm yeah. coming to the different, uh, let me for the benefit of the, everybody in the audience, let me put it this way. So when a ship leaves from London, UK, right? Yeah. Uh, Rotterdam or wherever. The information about the goods that is carrying, the tra business transactions are communicated from a computer to another computer in 
ports in Sri Lanka and well as even the companies that are importing these goods, right? So computer to computer communication is that's what is called electronic data interchange. And you are using EDFAC standards, right? United Nations EDFAC standards. Right. Sri Lanka is using all that United Nations EDFAC standards and the information is coming. So in other words, the information comes before the ship comes into the port. Right. So that information is coming through the local shipping agent or it can come directly from the shipping line uh, mm -hmm. to the terminal. Uh, uh, one is to the terminal to uh, do the yard planning and ship planning and birth planning. And uh, the other one is the cargo manifest information to the port system. That is, we have our own cargo management system and also they have to submit to customs Asikuda system. So that information, the, uh, the cargo related information has to, it is doing electronically at the moment through uh, EDI. Right. Now, let me ask you this question. This is a very uh, common sense question. When you take a port, which is doing commercial activities, is it the infrastructure? How big is your terminal? How deep is your seabed? And uh, the, 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 how good are your cranes, etc.? And how efficient your society as a worker bees, you know, people who are working fast? Or is it the technology matters? Which, which way you would swing? We need both. We need infrastructure, superstructure, as well as, as, well as uh, uh, information, the advanced uh, state-of-the-art uh, systems, right? Uh, software and communication system with linking with all the parties related to the port. Because we need today, uh, we are going towards paperless or with minimum uh, papers. So that's the goal. So we need both. Right. And now we can become competitive. Now a pointed question. Shahara mentioned last year things were really clogging up the, at the port, but suddenly some other you managed to remove the backlog and get things moving. Surely you didn't do that through technology, right? It is the sheer efforts of the people in your organization, Port Authority and various other private part partnerships. How did that happen? Actually, during this COVID period, uh, it accelerated our plans. So let me just uh, uh, show you the slide, uh, Arjun. Uh, Arjuna, uh, you could understand how the import container is cleared from the port uh, uh, with this slide. This is the import clearance process. Here you can see the customs uh, uh, software that is they call Asikuda system and CMS is blue color that is uh, the cargo management system of the Ports Authority. And here on the top you can see the shipping line right and also you can see the consignee and the freight forward in the bottom right so as i mentioned since you asked this question about the electronic edi now this is the shipping line or the container operator before the ship arrival they have to submit electronic e-manifest to sri lanka customs here you can see the process and also they submit to the slpa system or uh, whatever the terminal they operate right so if you look at, this is the total process of a clearance of a FCL, full container load. Now, if you look at this uh, uh, FCL, total out of imports, 95% of the imports are coming as FCL, full container load. The 5% is coming as LCL, less than container load. But if you take 95% of the car, uh, containers coming, it is cleared online. All the freight forwarders are linked to our system, then they can pay all online. There are five banks connected. So freight forwarder is linked to our system, right? And even the custom clearance release is given to our system. Even the gate pass can be submit, uh, printed by the freight forwarder and you don't, today you don't need any signature, right? To clear that cargo as long as uh, you pay online. So 95% of the containers coming. Now this process was there, but uh, due to COVID, this became 100% operation. All three terminals, 95% of the cargo imports now going online. Here yeah, you can see the process. Yes, very good. This is an interesting slide. I'm sure this is subject matter for another complete day, another session. And this is this is delighted to see this. Uh, Opul, uh, you mentioned three terminals. What are the three terminals? That is uh, SLPA terminals and uh, SAG, the South Asia Gateway Terminal, and CICT, Colombo International Container Terminal. That is uh, more than three, right? That is four or five? No, basically, we consider as the three, 
SLPA terminal like JCT, UCT, ECT, uh, that is SLPA terminals, then SAGT and CICT. So we normally consider uh, consider as uh, uh, three terminals. Now the East terminal is there. Yes, then it right. becomes. Now, now I'm going to ask uh, the question of the day. Okay, <laughs> you knew this was coming. And then what we will do is we'll give about 20 minutes to the audience to ask some questions through the chat box. So ladies and gentlemen, who we are viewing this uh, session, please uh, put your questions in short form. I see one question already uh, in the chat box, okay? Now the question to Upul and Chihara also can chip in if she has to, but I think the question is directed at Upul. Upul, why was such a big booha about the East Country and terminal in the last few days? Eventually, it's a lot of, lot of shouting and everything, and then suddenly it was taken off by the Sri Lanka Ports Authority as it was. And people ask, why, if you were doing that, why, uh, no, you, why what about the West, West Terminal, which is to be now tended to outside parties? How do you explain that such a commotion? Actually, now this East Terminal matter, right, was there for the last almost six years plus, right? So, if you if you uh, look at it, this is a, a policy decision, right? Policy decision has to be taken on how do whether to do by government or private. So that was there for since 2014, from various change of government, change of policies, and uh, uh, you know this has come as Shehara mentioned, uh, uh, didn't happen. Now finally. The, uh, the green light was given to operate by SLPA. Now, earlier it was planned to operate by SLPA, then to go for PPP, public-private partnership, call for uh, RFPs, and there were seven parties interested. And again, the government change of policies, uh, again, uh, go for uh, uh, um, India-Japan cooperation uh, 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 combination, and now uh, finally back to SLPA. So we are now developing East Terminal. Uh, Arjuna, uh, you are you are you are muted. Arjuna, you are muted. Yes, you are. Arjuna, you are yes. muted. Now I'm okay. Now I'm okay. Now I'm okay. I think I'm okay now. Right? Yes. Thank you, Shahra. You are better host than I am. That's for sure. Uh, Upul, now the uh, if you take the SLPA ports, which is East Container Terminal. Not the ports, actually, the, the terminals, East Canton Terminal, JCT, what else? There's a small the UCT. one. UCT, we have the UCT unit terminal. Actually, now it is not functioning because uh, the equipments that was there, we transferred to ECT for temporary use. But ECT is now, uh, UCT is now unit container terminal. It's now not operational for container. SG, SGET or SGAT? What is that? Uh, no, SAGT South Asia Gateway Terminal. Actually, that was the first uh, PPP uh, public private partnership on BOT basis uh, uh, terminal uh, we offered in 1999 for 30 year management. Right. Now it, that will become a SLPS property within about the nine years' time? Yes, uh, yes. After now 30 if, years. So if you take those four terminals or rather three terminals, is that? Full capacity for SLPA workforce and people. I mean, is that full load of work for three operates on SLPA? Um, uh, we have a big workforce because we are not only running terminals, we do navigation operation, right? We do value added logistic operation and we do all the maintenance, dredging, and you know, we have to 25 divisions under Ports Authority. So we are doing lot of uh, landlord functions as well, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to manage all ports, right? right? So we have a big workforce, not only a terminal, but also uh, other uh, maintenance, big organization. Right. Uh, uh, we will now take some of the questions from the audience who are typing things in. Uh, let's see. Let me see what they have asked. Okay, first person asks us. Okay, give very short answers because we will close this session by seven o'clock for sure. Very short answer, simple question. First one was, how is freight forwarder different from shipping agent? Who wants to take the share? You want to take this one? Yeah, how? sure. Yes, quick answer. So basically shipping agent represents um, a shipping line or uh, a casual caller, which is basically an agent directly for the principal. 
a freight forwarder does not represent the vessel. The shipping agent represents the vessel and makes sure that all the requirements of the vessel are met when it reaches a port. The freight forwarder is basically uh, dealing with freight. So he will get, he, he will uh, deal with the shipping agent. He will get rates from a shipping agent and then offer it to an importer or exporter. So he's an intermediary between the end customer who is the importer or exporter and the shipping line and the shipping agent. He's intermediary. Thank you. Thank you. These questions may be very trivial for some people, but I think the whole purpose of this first session was to get this jargon because well, I realized that when you discuss ports and harbors and etc., there's a whole lot of jargon. So here's the next question. Uh, Pull, give me a short, very short, to the point answer. What is a terminal and what is a berth? Are both the same? Yeah, two different things. Berth is a place where you uh, uh, you, uh, you stop a ship. Right, you uh, accommodate a ship that is called berth, but terminal is having it can have one berth or several berths. Yes, yes. Right. So difference is berth is a place where a ship come to the land, uh, tie up with the uh, uh, land. Yes. Now our screen looks like berthing. Three ships have berth, right? We are we yeah. are all here on the screen. Now this could be the terminal, and three ships have berths here. That's sort of how I see. It. A simple explanation. Next question. We were handling 7.2 7 million trans shipment. What is the demand expected from trans shipment with ECT coming up? If you expand ECT, what will be, what do you think? Yeah, the, so the ECT, total ECT, total capacity, we can go up to 3 million, right? 3 million uh, TUs with uh, ECT fully operational, right? 3 million uh, TUs can be handled. So with one, one berth, we can go up to 1 million, 1 million. Okay. The next question is a straightforward question. What is the plan for break bulk vessels? Yeah, break bulk, of course, not volume is not growing very much because the break bulk, as we see today, our break bulk, mostly it is containerized cargo coming in. But break bulk, it is coming mainly steel, coils and all, and also uh, like a sh bag form, right? Uh, fertilizer, sugar and things. So break bulk and, and then the other one category is the project cargo. You know, windmill and uh, various kind of heavy uh, machinery, project cargo. Stuff. But that is uh, not very much, but some are seasonal. Right. Who are the main country that we have transshipment? Is it India? Yes, we are right. India. 66% is Indian cargo. Will it be like that always because it's the closest big country? No, we, we, we have other potential places like Bangladesh and also East Africa, Myanmar. So we can uh, get into other uh, regions as well, not only India. Okay. Uh, can the present draft be able to cater to for tomorrow's lesson? But I think we discussed this up to 20. We can go yes. right. We can go up to seven, in Colombo, uh, uh, South Harbor, 17.2 meters. Uh, from the current 16.2 uh, meter ship, we have another one meter to go. Even right. we can handle 30,000 TU ship if they build. Okay, now here's a loaded question coming up your way. Shahara, you, can, you may, or whoever wants to take it, you can take this. There are hardly three or four major shipping alliances in the world. In Sri Lanka, is there only one shipping agent for one? Shipping alliances of multiple agents for shipping alliances. Do you understand the question or do you have to read it again? No, that's fine. I get it, yeah. I didn't uh, get it. You tell me. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you in the past few years we've seen. Um, Shara, Shara, what, what, you, is that, what is that question is all about? I didn't get that question. So yeah, I'm trying to explain. So um, you the the world has uh, previously had about thirty main shipping lines, but now in the last four five years we saw a huge consolidation of shipping lines in terms. Um, that some shipping lines went bankrupt and some merged together. And these 30 main shipping lines in the world became about uh, roughly about 12 main shipping lines. So the world trade is now controlled by these main 12 shipping lines. But of course, there are smaller ones up to about 17, um, but very few. And within these shipping lines, they form alliances. Alliances are uh, when two lines collaborate with vessels for um, on a on a particular route, uh, they collaborate so that uh, they can have the economies of scale, uh, volume, and so on. 
the, but they are not merged, but they are two different entities, but they would uh, like, you know, like two bus operators putting one, one guy puts one bus and the other guy puts another bus on the same route and they run that like a timetable on the schedule. So it's very similar to that. So those are the alliances. And uh, when it comes to agency, uh, each, each line is represented by one agent in Sri Lanka and that's through a license issued by the Director General Merchant Shipping. And um, that is uh, the who represents the shipping line is completely decided by the principal. So the principal can decide to appoint the either the, uh, one agent or, or even sometimes two, three lines are represented by one age, uh, one group. Uh, sometimes, but uh, it's individual licenses that are issued by the Director General Merchant Shipping. Thank you, Shah. That's a loaded question and loaded answer. And I'm going to go home and think about it, what you said. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, here's a question for Upul. Upul, now we will have another day. We will have another day uh, to discuss this in detail, but this is a good icebreaker for a start. When we build the ECT, that is East Container Terminal and West Terminals, what is the importance of Hamban to the port? So if once we expand the East Country Terminal to another 60%, rest of the 60% or 75% or whatever, and then the West Country Terminal comes up through a partnership, I think the timeline was something like five, six years from now. Where, where does that put, where do, where does that put Hambantu? Uh, ECT and uh, WCT West Terminal, we are mainly focusing on container handling. But uh, the Hambantota at the moment, uh, uh, Hambantota is an automobile, the vehicle handling transshipment hub. They're handling about out of their total volume about 90% vehicle handling, transshipment. So they have ample space for expand that. So all the leading uh, Roro car carriers are coming to Hambantota. Uh, not only that, and they are now into the bunkering business, liquid gas, uh, you know, there are two gas operators, Litro and uh, LAF, and also, uh, they have a tank farm and now they are going for bulk cargo handling, cement and the future they are building, uh, they are going for so many others. So there are a lot of opportunities uh, not only for a uh, container business, that is the that is option also there, but uh, again they can go for all other sort of cargo, liquid, dry bulk, automobile, brake bulk, uh, project cargo and so many other, even uh, manufacturing. Right. Now this question is I will put to pull, but Shahar also can chip in. At the very beginning, Upul was made it very convincingly clear that what is important for a port, or a harbor, rather a port, is to bring the ship in, unload, get the things into it, and let the ship go out as fast as possible. So what is the present turnaround time for a ship at the Sri Lanka Ports Authority for the East Container Terminal? I think better to ask from the customer. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think uh, it, that can be improved. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> right, so always, was, always there's room for improvement. Right, right. Give us a number. Give us a number, Shara. What is the number that you would quote and what is it relative to other parts of the world or how would it, where does it stand? Just give us a number. And people can it, answer and actually uh, now, you know, it is. It depends. You know, you just can't, simply can't say a uh, turnaround. It again depends on the customer because the turnaround is one factor but uh, if you can turn around the ship, but without cargo, without connection, and that is not going to work. So transshipment hub, it's not only the turn around, how fast you can turn, but most important is to get the ship filled with cargo connection, right? So otherwise the ship can run on liner terms on a schedule, but empty, and that is not going to work. So there are both sides, but uh, you know, it's not easy to say uh, which turn around. So again, you have to see individual customers, how would they look at? How they think it. Right. Now, let's go very slowly. I think this is a good segue to the next session we will have. So, therefore, pull very go slowly. You are, you are, you leave this stuff. So, you are very fast when you explain things. So, let's go very slowly. Now, <laughs> you, made, you, made a, you made a very good point about this uh, turnaround times, right? In transshipments port, where the ships, big ships comes in, and landlord stuff, then small ships come and take them to another location. So I think that's some sort of like transshipment, am I right? Yes. Right. Right. Now, somebody is asking a question. Compare that Colombo with Singapore, for example, or India. Can you compare Singapore? Because Singapore does a little bit of a different thing, right? 
actually singapore is in a different location they are number 2 container port in the world whereas we uh, and singapore is handling about 39 million tus whereas we are handle about 7.2 million and we are the 22nd container but two different locations but some cargo some captive market both are competing like indian east coast cargo and bangladesh right so uh, different locations again depending on where the cargo is moving for example bangladesh cargo which is going to westbound to europe this colombo would be the best connected option it could save about 5 days but the same cargo can route via singapore additional 5 days but any cargo originating in bangladesh which is going to eastbound that is uh, uh, the east asia or us uh, west coast best connected uh, singapore malaysia okay that's a question you, you, i will read the question as it is but if you think it's going to take long time please uh, don't do give a long answer please explain transshipment in detail please explain transshipment in detail so tra transshipment is a logistic arrangement uh, uh, of a shipping line how do they connect so when the ships are getting bigger and bigger there is a need for transshipment uh, so the ship will stop in few uh, mega ports when the ship gets bigger and then the cargo has to be after the unloading then the cargo will do the distribution to the regional ports okay next one is explain bunker in business explain singapore oil hub business singapore is a oil hub how can sri lanka be a oil hub But before you before you answer one other thing there is a big expansion taking place in singapore they are asking what will happen to sri lanka with all this expansion in singapore also expands Shahara would be able to tell that. Yeah, go ahead, Shahara. Yeah, so bunkers is the fuel for ships, and Singapore currently does about fifty to sixty million tons a year. That's the number of their supply. Sri Lanka is only supplying something like sixty thousand tons a year. So we are nowhere in comparison in terms of volume uh, when it comes to supply of bunkers. but this supply of bunkers is a critical element if we want to become a major hub port in terms of services as well and the price that we offer the bunkers is very important and that is why we are sri lanka does not is not able to get this volume because we cannot offer the same price as singapore and why is that two reasons one is singapore has a refinery for Chara, the product wait chara what is bunkering to everybody's uh, understanding what is bunkering Bunkers is fuel. That's how I started. I explained what bunkers is. Bunkers is fuel for ships, like petrol for a car. The fuel to run the ship is called a bunker. Bunkers, right. and it's um, marine gas oil or uh, fuel oil. There are right. some grades, different grades, right. um, but uh, it is a, a specialist type of fuel. Yes. So Singapore has their own refinery that would produce this uh, required volume. so they are able to give it at this um, at, a, at a competitive price whereas in sri lanka we have to import our entire requirement uh, internal requirement of course and also the export whatever we are supplying the ships uh, which are coming to port of colombo and other ports our entire requirement is imported so when you import this uh, this quantity we have to store it and unfortunately sri lanka doesn't have a huge storage capacity for bunkers we have the jayak uh, jct oil bank in the port of colombo which is the only uh, storage terminal which was operational operational up to now and uh, and now of course we have the hamantota storage tanks as well coming on stream which is um, a really positive sign for the country so um, if we are to be a serious bunker trader or a bunker player in the region we need to one have increase our storage capacity in colombo and outside colombo and second uh, we need to have a refinery output as well in the longer run yeah you made a very complicated question very common since at the end of it thank you very much I, that's that's why i ask you to repeat the question the word bunker because it requires capacity large capacity or the ability to quickly produce the the oil that you want now two questions and i think that will be the last two questions we'll take uh, to uh, pull pull uh, these two questions will lead up to the next session of ours okay i think most likely number one how ports earn money by royalty how long will it take easy to fully develop to be fully developed 
the, the royalty is uh, for the each number of containers that is uh, loading unloading from uh, sea to land land to sea uh, and the uh, 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 money that uh, paid is called royalty right so that is the uh, part of the uh, uh, revenue that comes to the landlord for the owner right and the the second question is how long will it take to uh, ect fully operational so if we are now planning to order cranes it will take about 15 to 18 months uh, right minimum 15 months so uh, we will be operational by end of uh, 2022 um, uh, uh, if you order right now uh, Paul, uh, the leading uh, kind of a sub question from our coming out of that. Now, uh, things were slow in developing ECT terminal. During the, the last the, the heated conversations, we heard that ECT terminal, its content terminal was developed slowly. And things were not ordered on time and things like that. Was there, was there a logic behind that? Yeah, I, that's what I just mentioned, and that was the discussion. And uh, you may have got a lot of news about in the past. So we placed a, a crane orders in 2000, uh, 2014 end, and uh, due to the change of government, the crane order was uh, cancelled. Right? We ordered uh, four cranes and twelve uh, yard cranes, and uh, uh, after that, uh, we didn't order any cranes due to all these uh, uncertainty. And now we are now planning to order cranes. So, but up to now, at the moment, we are we are operating with three cranes, which was ordered for JCT. But ECT is operational with three cranes and twelve yard cranes at the moment. Right now, I heard that during these conversations over the TV, even when you participated, is does Sri Lanka has a national policy on ports or harbors for that? Now, uh, the there were a lot of discussions and various policies were uh, uh, came from time to time. But now, a uh, new policy is being formulated at the moment. It's under discussion now. Yes, because the reason I, I want the audience to understand why I asked that question. If we do in Sri Lanka, one is not just ports, everything else. We don't seem to have a national policy. I'm not saying that national policy is the workable plan, but there should be a direction, right? For example, in this, uh, not to start a debate here uh, with you, Pool, or anybody else, just set a sort of like a meaning to that question. Now, Shahara at the very early stage said that if the ports, she doesn't mind, uh, yeah, ship, well, shippers don't mind whether it is owned by the government or the private sector or the public-private partnership or whatnot, as far as they can get the best services, they are happy. But if we can keep all of it, Sri Lankans can keep it, Sri Lankan government can keep it, it's good money for us, right? But there's risks in developing these ports. As you, we can obviously see that a lot of money has to be put into the sunk, as go as sunk cost before the shippers come in to do get the services. With all that, risk has to be mitigated. Future plans has to be decided and technology can be a destructive technology, you know, disruption, things can happen. Uh, if Amazon start delivering everything by drones, we are in trouble. <laughs> right? This can, it's possible. It's possible. These are possible things. So, uh, so that's why I asked that question. One last question and then we'll wrap it up. What is the revenue expected by CCLP when ECD is fully developed? I think you mentioned that, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when ECT is fully operational, we'll get navigation revenue and all the stevedoring, that is the uh, loading, unloading and the storage charges. So entire, if we are operating East Terminal 100%, so the entire revenue comes to SLPA, navigation, cargo handling terminals. Right. Here's, here's a good one for you to take homework for you, Pool. There's a question. There's a concern that there is no separate accounts for terminals. No way to compare performance of individual terminals. What is your view? I think that's a good question. I was thinking about that myself. So the terminals are being operated. How do you separate which one is which? Uh, individual terminals, uh, they have their own accounting system and uh, their own performance system, right? Berthing system and the terminal management system. So individual terminals has their own, uh, own uh, uh, accounting systems, operational systems, uh, uh, terminal operating systems. Uh, individuals, they have it. You are going to, uh, just uh, not a question, but this statement, because I spoke to you earlier before the session started. You are going to fully computerize each container terminal? Yes, uh, we are uh, working on that uh, to make uh, uh, advanced uh, terminal. Uh, we want to build it for the future, right? So each terminal will have uh, advanced uh, equipments uh, 
uh, and uh, you will uh, come to know all these uh, later but now we are working to uh, go for advanced uh, state of the art equipment so how, how many people on the what do you call that the apron or the terminal the, the where the goods are being delivered and unloaded and loaded what is that thing called you you mean uh, stevedoring or Steward lashing stevedoring stevedoring no, no no for container terminals actually when you say stevedoring you will have a one person on the deck that is we call normally deck controller and then we have the gantry crane operator and yeah. underneath you can have a wharf controller and plus lashing people to lock and unlock containers right now when you fully automate all these four people will lose the jobs no no we are not talk or talking fully automation but uh, uh, we are now working on how to as shahara mentioned how to improve the efficiency right mm -hmm. uh, now when we go for automation you will not have much problem when you have minimum just like the online electronic payment system so it become more efficient so yes. we have to now think when we are building terminals for the future we have to see how other ports work in the world and how <laughs> and it, it, it's uh, it's open for a lot of discussions right last parting thoughts for you pool the reason i asked the question uh, the reason that i asked that question is that when the when countries developed countries were moving from manual labor to automation and then to the fully electronic basis there were, there, were, there was national level plans to train them to become most sophisticated operators in a certain other areas. For example, when automated guided vehicles were big business in the early, early, late 80s and early 90s in USA, they took the people who lost the jobs and they trained them to operate some of the computers. So I think something to think about as a nation, we have to do that. I mean, as you rightly pointed out, to pull our automation and our computerization is a must. I like him a lot. <laughs> I think uh, it's important to train our people as well, right? There's something to think about in the future. Yes, uh, Arjun, I think uh, even now during the COVID period, even uh, even a grade one or two, two a student, they know how to operate a computer and ha how to uh, get into Zoom uh, uh, teams and all. They are all, all online. So we, we have to think uh, uh, differently now with regard to the technology. So let me do this now. I will uh, the time for a vote of thanks. Hang on there. I want to finally do my own thanks to both of you. In fact, I might as well do this. Uh, Shara, please come on screen. I would like to see you. I would like to see you here. Where is your camera? Right. So where are you? Now? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you are ready for the party, Women's Day party, I think. Yeah. Right. Anyway, thank you very much. To both of you, uh, I, I really appreciate your input uh, here, very deep and sound uh, technical input. And this is just the beginning of the session. We will have some more sessions. Of I really like to see you engage in these conversations with Chara and some others. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Kirti Atanayaka from OPA, the Convener for National Issues Committee, to do the vote of thanks. I'll step outside. So thank you very much, Upul. Thanks a lot. Here we go. Thanks, Arjuna. Thanks, Arjuna. Yeah, stay there for our time. Yes, Thank you very much. I, mean, I, I think I'll make the thing much more quicker and easier. And I would first I would like to thank uh, to our two resource personnel so who are expert on the subject matter and like very fluent in explaining the singles, uh, the very complicated issue in very simple terms. And special thanks go to Paul Jayadister and Shiraga Disilloy, despite of your busy schedule, joining with us for this exercise. Then, um, as a formality, I would like to thank uh, Sar Mr. Saradhyam again and Uma Pranasingha for coordinating uh, uh, everything with the panelists and Dulanti and the center director and the support team for providing this opportunity to have this uh, survey and this afternoon smoothly. And uh, other than that, I would like to thank all the participants who also got uh, uh, linked through Zoom and through NET uh, with us to make this event successful. And finally, I would like to thank the, the committee members also, those who are uh, behind the scene. And thank you very much. And uh, we hope to see you all back again in the, the continuing uh, uh, programs of this seminar series. Thank you. Before we part, ladies and gentlemen, one thought from uh, OPA. This, this session was fully recorded.
I hope we can hear me through the mask. This session was fully recorded. Uh, this will be put on our website very soon. Uh, then, as I mentioned at the beginning, we plan to have similar sessions on the fourth development of Sri Lanka, because it is very important that we are beginning to realize that uh, how important it is and how technical it, the, the whole subject matter is. It's not a, it's a very complicated thing. In fact, when you pass through Colombo Ports Authority in Colombo, it's a big, big bridge, big, uh, big gates, and everything is all covered up. All we see is ships and gantry cranes. But inside, there's a very sophisticated plan uh, connected throughout the world, as Shara mentioned. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for bringing that uh, information to us for the initial discussion. Things will be a little bit more hot as we move forward into the future. Uh, so with that, Tupul and Shara and the audience, thank you very much. Have a safe night, safe, safe, be safe. Uh, I was I was inside this room with only with Keith, Dr. Keith is <laughs> thinking about it. Uh, have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Bull. Thank you, Shah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Goodbye. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.